So this is 9.6, a quadratic formula. And it's the last method that we're going to learn how to solve quadratics. The first thing that we're going to look at is the discriminant, which is part of the quadratic formula. But the discriminant tells us how many uh, solutions we'll have. And it's an easy way for you to tell if you have no solution and you don't have to go through the, the trouble of doing the entire formula. So the discriminant is here, b squared minus 4ac. And if you plug into b squared minus 4ac and you end up with a positive number, you know that you have two solutions. If you plug in and you end up with a zero, you know that you have one solution. And if you plug in and, and end up with a negative number, you know you have no solution or zero solutions. Okay, at the bottom you'll see how this looks like graphically. Remember when we have two solutions, we have two x-intercepts. So this is if it was going down, here's one if it was going up. If you have one solution, you have one x-intercept, going up, going down. And here, if you have no solutions, you have no x-intercepts, it'll never touch the x-axis. Okay, so using the discriminant, we're going to figure out how many solutions some of these have. So if you look at the first one, A is 1, sorry, B is 7, C is 8, and if we plug in, we have 7 squared minus 4 times A times C, which gives us 49 minus 32, and this is going to give me a positive number. So I know that this one is going to have two solutions. Go ahead and try the next three. Okay, so here are your answers. You see the first one has two solutions, the next one has no solution because it was a negative number, and the last one has two solutions. So here are all the methods that we've gone over. We went over graphing, which you're going to use if you, really only if you have a graphing calculator. This is not something that you're going to use a lot in Algebra 1 because it's a little more tedious, especially if the numbers are very small or very large. Square roots, you're going to use if you have no b, no x term. Factoring is going to be the one that you'll probably use the most, especially if you can factor it easily. Completing the square, you will also use pretty often, but you don't want to use completing the square if you can't easily get a to 1, and if the b is not even. But you, do, you can do it with fractions, but it'd be simpler if it wasn't. And the quadratic formula is your last resort. You use the quadratic formula if all other methods fail. So let's look at the quadratic formula. Here's the quadratic formula. x equals negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac over 2a. Yes, you need to memorize that. There are different ways that you can memorize that. Some people use acronyms. Um, one of the more popular ones is a negative boy couldn't decide whether or not to go to the radical party. So the square boy missed out on four awesome chicks and it was all over by 2 a.m. Or you can just memorize the letters, whatever you prefer. Okay, so let's look at this problem. The first thing we want to do is figure out what our a, b, and c is. But the only way that we can do that is if it's equal to zero. So I'm going to add the 2 to the other side. So now I have everything equal to 0, and I can go ahead and figure out my a, b, and c. So my a is negative 1, my b is negative 4, and my c is 2. So I'm going to plug it into the quadratic formula, but notice here, this is the discriminant that we were looking at before. So I'm going to do that first, the discriminant, because then I know if it has no solution. So negative 4 squared minus 4 times a times c, which gives me 16 plus 8, and that's 24. So I know that that's going to be two solutions, and that's going to go under my radical. So here we go. x equals negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac, which I just did here. So 24 all over 2 times a negative 1. So now I have x equals, this becomes a positive 4, plus or minus the square root of 24, 
over negative 2. The square root of 24 I can break down, right? So I'll just do that over here. 24, 4 and 6, 2 and 2, 2 and 3. So I have a pair of 2's that comes out. So x equals 4 plus or minus the 2 that came out and the 6 that stays on the inside all over negative 2. So now I'm going to have two answers from this, right? Because I have a plus or a minus here. So it's going to be x equals 4 plus 2 root 6 over negative 2. And x equals 4 minus 2, oops, 2 root 6 over negative 2. And then we're going to have to reduce. So let me show you how to do that. So since we split them up into two problems, right, one with a plus, one with a minus, we now have to reduce. So what we're going to do is we're going to factor out a GCF. And notice here on the top that they're both divisible by 2. So I'm going to factor out a 2. And that's what I'm going to have left, right? 4 divided by 2 is 2, and 2 divided by 2 is 1 square root 6. And I can do that on both of them. The only difference is the sign. And the reason I want to do that is because now I can reduce. I couldn't reduce before because I have three numbers. So in order for me to reduce, I have to take out the GCF. So now I can reduce. The 2 and the negative 2 can both be divided by 2. Oops, I don't know what happened there. And again here, they can both be divided by 2. So I'm left with, I would have a negative 1 on the bottom, but in order to not have a negative on the bottom, I'll just push it up. And I have a negative, parentheses, 2 plus root 6. And x equals negative, parentheses, 2 minus root 6. And you could have written that together, 2 plus or minus root 6. You don't have to have them separate. It's really up to you. I just wanted you to see where that was coming from. Okay, so why don't you go ahead and try this one, number one. Plug into the quadratic formula. Remember to check the discriminant because if it's a no solution, then you don't have to keep going. And check, we'll check the answers in a few seconds. Okay, so check your answer. And notice that as you go down to your two answers, over here you have 1 plus 1 minus. They have a GCF, which you have to take out. And then you can reduce it with the bottom. So you're left with x equals 1 plus radical 3 and x equals 1 minus radical 3. Also notice back here you had a radical 12. You have to break that down. So whenever you have a radical that can be broken down, you need to make sure that you do that. So I found the discriminant here. You don't have to do that. You can go directly to quadratic formula. That's up to you. Go ahead and try number two. Okay, check your answer. Um, on this one, I didn't split it at the end so that you could see what it looks like if it stays together. I did take out a GCF and I reduced with the bottom, but I left it together since I can't actually solve it because there's a radical 10 and it's negative 5 plus or minus 2 square root radical 10 over 3. That's okay. It's the same as if you had split it and done 1 with a plus and 1 with a minus. So make sure you go back and look at the notes if you don't understand and come in with questions tomorrow. Bye from period 3!